Here we go. So, so Brian, you saying you loving Eminem? You said you said you respecting Eminem. You saying what was? Because one of his free times popped into my head where he says, I got brain damage. Give me a plain sandwich. Give me one. Rappers try to step to this. They want to give me none. Refresh vegetables. My testicles. And hanging oh. off to the left of you. You're bisexual. And there's a guy next to you. Yo, I just love the way his syllables connect. It's like, it's like it, it hypnotizes me. I love Eminem. He's, he's the greatest. <laughs> well, that is such a great um, intro, I guess, to our basketball podcast, James Eddie. That's all I can say. Yeah. Okay. Because it is right now the second episode of a basketball podcast with no name. <laughs> yes, indeed. Here we go, y'all. The intro. But my goat. I ain't so fly like a rockin' no Chris Paul. The trick got him pissed off. We moving that pack in the mail and shipped off. We ballin' on tip off. Hit up in the morning. They ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen this is the second episode and a unique, wonderful episode of a of a, bas- a basketball podcast with no name. With no name. <laughs> I'm Andrew no name. Jones with the great Sir James Eddie, this great co-host, the great co-host sir right here. And uh, we have a wonderful edition with our friend um, Brian Cowan joining us and since he loves his basketball, not just loves, he loves his basketball. And it's only fitting that with the NBA playoffs in the bubble, NBA summer camp as I call it, NBA summer camp, NBA bubble, NBA COVID-19 era, NBA Disney, whatever you want to call it, it is here. <laughs> it is here finally. So Brian, how are you doing today, good sir? Uh, just just doing regular, you know, uh, over here in Florida, waiting for the rain to fall and not fall. Well, that That's is perfect. Well, you are just like those almost in the bubble in both Orlando and Bradenton. Don't forget the WNBA. But that's mm-hmm. what it is with that. Now, for people, you may not, you want to see the good Sir James Eddie all the way through, but he has cooking responsibilities. So just in case or whatnot, he may roll out for a second or whatever. I don't want to mess him up or whatnot. <clears throat> my connection issues overall, well, simply my speaker issues. But right now, good sirs, before we even get into the playoff discussion overall, and we obviously know that Damian Lillard is the whole summer camp and a regular season bubble MVP or whatever with this. Um, where you definitely, for sure, dismayed that the Grizzlies still were in, are in this all the way instead of obviously the Phoenix Suns who went undefeated only for to then just go home and just have a free trip to Disney. No. Oh, Jay said no. Calvin, what do you say? If I was surprised? No, are you are you upset or dismayed that it is the Grizzlies oh. playing the Blazers instead of the Suns playing the Blazers? I'm not. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm I'm dismayed, not upset, because I can't be mad at that young boy for playing good basketball. The, John Morant is better than Kyrie Irving, y'all. I've been said that. Whoa, I think he went up against Brian, Kyrie. Brian, 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 yes, Brian, it came in hot. I thought I came in hot by saying no. Brian said no. (laughs) And came in with Kyrie. And James, he has said this. He has said this, so he's insisting on this. Yeah, because because John Morant with his athleticism is a force in the paint that Kyrie Irving isn't. And defensively, John Morant can do things. And Kyrie is, is decent at best whenever he tries. Defensively, you have a little bit of an argument. But you are underestimating Kyrie Irving even finishing in the lane. And I'm telling you, Kyrie's a better athlete than some people give him credit for. And you forgetting that Kyrie's the ultimate inside the paint in terms of finisher, in terms of certain things that's not a dunker. So, uh, you know, I, you you coming out of that, that one, that's almost like Kyrie believing the earth is flat when you say that now. Well, all right, Andrew, I hope you don't agree with Skip Bayless because Skip Bayless thinks that Kyrie Irving is way better than um, uh, Damian Lillard. And I'm like, Damian Lillard is in Steph Curry status. Like, he is a yeah. game changer. He's sick. And Kyrie Irving won't even make the Hall of Fame. So what are we even talking about here? Ryan, Ryan, oh, whoa, whoa. Ryan, Ryan. He won't. Come on. He won't. Oh, man. <laughs> Let me ask you how did Steve Francis make the Hall of Fame? Remember Steve Francis from the Houston Rockets? Okay, I'll shut up. 
No, I'm not it. talking. I, I'm not. That's a shot. I'm that. My take on that is a shot at. I'm not saying Kyrie is that great, but I'm also saying that basketball Hall of Fame lets in every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Even so like. <laughs> So, I hate when people say Kyrie's that. Oh. Like just on the pre- the chain, the fact that he his contr- contributions to Duke as as a freshman and him his, his season imploding. Yep, and then just the mere the fact that he hit that shot against the Warriors and they destroyed that seven three and nine team. Just those two things on his resume. We're not even getting into the amount of all stars that he's got, the all star appearances that he has that gets factored into the Hall of Fame. Like, yeah. to be quite honest, if he plays like three more all star seasons with Kevin Durant, let's say him and Kevin Durant make it to like the Eastern Conference Finals next year or for like the next two better. years, he's like solidly in. He's solidly in if they make it to the Conference Finals those, those two years. Yeah. Hey, re- remember, just like Andrew, I'm born and raised in Brooklyn. I'm a Brooklyn Nets fan, but I, my eyes are telling me when I see Kyrie Irving, he's not the guy you want. You don't want the ball in his hands. Sometimes he makes bad decisions, takes bad shots, and he's not Kobe. Kobe can take bad shots and win a game. Kyrie ain't that. Kyrie well, is not as good as he thinks he is. Well, yeah, we love you, Kobe, man. Jeez, as love someone who experienced the year of Kyrie, two years, a year, year and some change with Kyrie, we were glad you guys welcomely accepted him into Brooklyn. <laughs> that, is, that is very true. That is very true. <laughs> Y'all are both the past place that he was in and now the current place that he's in. For people that want to know what not, I cannot associate myself with the gentrifying Nets, by the way. Um, I, I'm still... Oh, wow. I'm still a distant... I'm still... Well, first of all, I'm a deputy journalist here. But second, overall, I'm still... Despite it being owned by a complete Neander, Mother Pinthal, and um, uh, James Dolan overall, and the person that wants to fight Charles, well, doesn't want to fight Charles, he doesn't want to fight anybody, but he <laughs> wants to you know, take everybody out of the scene with his bitter, fell playing um, music, um, passed down, nepotistic, you know, ain't good sh- for his, his well. Jesus. Um, well, I mean, it's speaking the truth. I mean, it's factually said. He just, he had that as well. So, that's what it is, but I just can't rock with the team whatever it basically has best style on their on their uniform thing and that's cool just to really have that or whatever. I think that that means that they're down. So 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 yeah. But I will say that since we're talking about the Nets and not this is we're not gonna talk about the, the Kyrie pre COVID nineteen discussions and all that. Did we're you, you want about, us to answer that question about the Suns? Did you want me to Elaborate on my no, no, thought on the I, I, I already know how you feel, James. It's like it's the reg- the whole regular season. It's not yeah. just the bubble. It's the whole <laughs> regular season. Yeah, I see you like tell me. You just like I'm not. I don't care about. Well, I'm here to care about but the full season. So that's very justified. Now I will say this about the Nets, and this is why people have to understand this. They play just like the Raptors overall. And the Raptors, they give the Raptors fits, and they gave the Raptors like fits the other night. I'm telling you, I mean, excuse me, they gave the Blazers, the, they almost knocked the Blazers out of the playoffs with the Blazers full strength. And the Nets, again, having all the injuries. And then when you got their three biggest or uh, highest paid players out, Durant, Kyrie Irving, DeAndre Jordan, and they're still so competitive. This is why Jot Vaughn, Monty Williams, been the best coaches so far in the bubble. Jot Vaughn, I'm I saying right now, he, he has been so great coaching that not only is he going to be the coach next season without a doubt, Jot Vaughn's, is a, Jot Vaughn's a better coach than even Nick Nurse right now. And, and, and I say, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, well, I'm listening. Definitely. Jesus. Definitely. Wait, 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 wait. Can I say something about the Nets? I forgot the name of the Nets coach that they fired. To me, he wasn't the problem. There wasn't no major problem. That guy wasn't great, but he didn't suck. To me, Kyrie Irving sucked. Well, well, that's why the Nets were better without him on the floor. I looked at the numbers. Well, I'm sorry. Well, that's why. No, it's okay, Ron. That you're saying that, because at first, everybody rational was like. Kenny Atkinson didn't deserve this. Like, he don't even got his full strength. He didn't. And, and, and he, he really actually didn't. But you know what? Sean Marks, smart GM, smart ball player yeah. for the Kiwis of New Zealand, you know, 
and that means through the Spurs system. So he's all, so he knows his basketball, basketball. And Jock, to get Jock Vaughn, who was a good backup point guard for the Jazz, so a respected point guard, backup point guard, definitely. That's where I saw him before. Thank you. There you go. It's bugging me. I thought he was a backup point guard for the Nets for the, when they were in New Jersey, though. That's what I remember him from. But then I was like, nah, yes. it must have been something yes, else. He was. Yes, he was. Oh, he actually was? Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go, yes, Nets fan. There you go, Nets fan. I mean, that you were only Nets fan on the Brooklyn side. But he did, in, when he was over in New Jersey, do his thing or whatever. Jai Bond, I'm telling you, Jai Bond is a story story. Because he, I mean, he L.A. real all the way, all that Pasadena. Then went to to get to, to, to Kansas with Paul Pierce. Kansas. And, you know, mm-hmm. Ray for France. You know, he, he literally was there. Wow, player. Ray for France. He played for the Mavericks and then he played. Yo, wait, so, uh, wait, all right, so, so let, let me say something here about about the 76ers. To me, that coach needs to get fired. I've been said that. But I, and, I, and other than the. Wait, wait. Huh? Wait, wait, Rob. We're going to get fired. We go, we go. Oh, we're going to have a debate on that. So, wait, so before we do that, let me get right into it. I think, I think, even though I failed Toronto, it's like when the net, they are, they, they scared. They, they, the Nets went and ended the Raptors winning streak during normal times, or it won't be normal times anymore, in Toronto with Karis LeVert going off just like he's done this whole entire time in the bubble. Then with he, the Nets, they play like the Raptors, and that's why the Raptors fear them, because like other teams take the Raptors a little bit. But grand, because they're like, wow, the scene, Siakam's like the best player, Kyle, but you know, they still them. So let's show us what you got after Kawhi. And the Raptors have seven, eight quality players who are so versatile and tough to deal with. The Nets really have that got kind of a little bit too. And they don't have anything to lose. This is all the game. I'm telling you, watch that series for sure. But I am know, a, okay. Yeah, but uh, Yeah, I think both both one eight matchups depending on how they go. I think if Memphis ends up playing the Lakers, it won't be that great. But if Portland plays the Lakers, the way Portland's been playing in the bubble, I think both 1-8 matchups are going to be really interesting. Yes, indeed. Without a doubt, you know, um, you know, before we get into the Brett Brown, out of nowhere, um, debate. Oh, that, that dude angers me. Let's go right into it. I'm saying before we get in, let's go right into it. Brian, you explain, and then James with the rebuttal, and then I try to manage in the middle. Go ahead, Brian. Okay, so 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 this is what I'm saying, man. I I just feel like yo, I right, but when I look at uh, what's his name, the the religious freak who used to coach the Warriors, what's his name, the point guard Mark guy, Jackson? Mark, Mark Jackson, Mark Jackson. <laughs> yeah, well, all right. So when I look at Mark Jackson not having a head coach job, I look at this fucking idiot and uh, who coaches the 76. I can't even remember his name. That's how much I don't like him. He has two. Brett Brown, Friday, Friday, he has two. Messages. <laughs> <laughs> he, has, he has two rare talents at the same time, and can't juggle it the way Phil Jackson would, or the way. And by the way, Popovich, you know what Popovich does? Popovich more than anybody in the NBA ch- manipulates and changes his style according to the roster he has. This guy Brett Brown can't get it right, man. And and I think and and other than the coach being a problem, I think that um. Embiid and Australian boy uh, Ben Simmons don't belong together on a team. It could work, but they can maximize their potential separate from each other. And 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 one, and one off topic. I hope we have time to talk about the Bucks because I think the Bucks are making a mistake by starting that that guy who can't shoot at point guard. I think they need to start the other guy. Uh, yeah, Bledsoe don't need to be starting. And I always and when they gave him that contract, I was like, why are y'all paying him this money? Well, I, was, I mean, great points, great points, Brian. Excellent, excellent. Now, James, can you? What's your rebuttal towards why Brett Brown should not be fired in the sixth from Elson Brand? I don't think. I think what happens, he won't get fired because, as Andrew and Brian knows, when it comes to sports, the coach is the great scapegoat for the GM's mishaps, right? Elton Brand inherited the team which the Colangelo's already gave him. Brian alluded to it a little bit. Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid can't coexist on the same team. And instead of trying to play into maybe a a little bit more spacing, the GM, they got Tobias Harris, 
who, yes, he, career-wise, he shoots a very high three-point percentage. But you have to factor in he has to take more three-point shots in order to be effective. So mm -hmm. then when they got rid of J.J. Redick, then they had even less poor spacing. And they got rid of J.J. Redick and picked up Al Horford? Like, what the hell were they thinking? Like, what were they thinking? And they How did, did they that, think? And, and, and James, they only did that to try to... Get at Boston. To, like, to, why? to get at Boston, to get at us. Because yeah. they knew Horford is the only person who could stop MB. So yes. Yes. that was oh, like. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Mm -hmm. That's all wow. That yeah, that was the only. Re they, Brian, they literally offered him a con. Like, the Celtics had a contract offer on the table, right? And they were going to pay him something close to what he made against the 76ers. And I think the 76ers paid like 15 mil extra on top of whatever we were giving him. Like, it was like the decision for him to leave. Why do you think people here aren't mad at Al left? Like they gave him an absurd amount of money that we were like, oh no, we're not gonna match that. So like, that was the big thing. Um, okay. Especially at his age. So that made no, it was like, okay, they did that. And then they refused to have Al come off the bench. So then it made the spacing issue that they already had 10 times worse. From what I understand and from what Brett Brown, Brett Brown again is doing the coaches thing of like, I'm not gonna throw anyone under the bus. So I'm just gonna eat it. But from what I've heard is Brett Brown's been asking since September for Al Horford to come off the bench. And Al was like, he refused. And Elsa Brand was like, we paid him too much money for this dude to be coming off the bench. So what is he supposed Jesus. to do with a starting lineup of Joel Embiid, who, if he's taking, I, I, so I told Andrew I love shoot, true shooting as one of my favorite advanced analytical stats, right? And the reason I like it, okay. it essentially tells you how much a person, how well a person can shoot based on percentage. And I love it from a team aspect. But I get in arguments all the time where people will tell me, Draymond Green could shoot. And I'm like, Draymond Green cannot shoot. They're like, he shoots 38% from three. I'm like, if Draymond shoots 12 threes, how many is he making? Maybe he made three. Good point. Right? So that's what my yeah. mind is thinking about. If you tell me Tobias Harris shoots 40% from three or close to 40% from three, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, he's making two out of four. But what happens in a system where he now needs to take eight for it to be effective? He needs to make four to five of those threes to be effective. So to me, they didn't have the personnel to ever be good. Like that, that was when everybody was riding high on them. I was like, unless Ben Simmons develops a, a great jump shot, like if he develops, a, not even develops a great jump shot, if he just takes the shot. Ray John Rondo is all I have to say to you. Ray John Rondo is all I have to say to you, bro. Right, right. You don't need to have a, that's what I'm saying. What I'm saying to me, he doesn't, I'm, not, I'm saying I want him to get a shot, but to me, him having a shot should not be an excuse. You want me to tell you why? Because even when you pull them away, you look at all the ballers they have on, on that squad, the size that they have and the athleticism that they have, they shouldn't have been struggling with the Nets last year. Last playoffs when they were struggling with the Nets, I was like, all right, this is cool, but why are y'all struggling? And I'm telling you, when they go against the Celtics, I'm going to be rooting for them to eliminate you guys because then Embiid will solidify himself as he, as he beats y'all and takes y'all to a game seven. Because Embiid... Oh, 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 by the way, I said a hot take the other day. I was saying that the, the dude who was in that, that movie with Keanu Reeves, that he's the sixth, sixth best center in the NBA right now. Uh, Rodmanovich, Boban. Yeah, Boban. Boban is the sixth, Boban is the sixth best center in the league. Give me six centers better than him. Give me six. No, not power forward, centers. Centers, Jared Allen. <laughs> Joel Embiid. Allen. James. Joel Embiid, okay. Jared Allen's better, better than both. Jared Allen is better? Are you nuts? Okay, okay no. I'll shut up. James, James, I got, I got, I got, I got it, I got it, I got it. Ryan, Ryan, let me do this. Can you, can you let my feet? <laughs> All right, look, let's go, let's just do it, let's do it. Let me do it one by one, all right? Jokic, Embiid, then Carl Anthony Towns. Then we have, I would say... Oh, Eddie Towns a power forward. All right, I forgot about him. Fine. Then he's the, he's the eighth best. He's the eighth best. Yeah, I forgot eight. about Colin Anthony Towns. Right. 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 Wait, no, 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 no. is not a center. They, they're playing Brian. center, but they're not centers. Brian, don't let me kick you off this zone, Brian. 
Towns and Valachunas, they play the center position, even if they may not be 7 1, even though Towns is 6 11. He, they, All right, they, I, you they, know what? I, I would check my sentence. I, I would check my statement. It wasn't even worth making. I apologize. I apologize. Statistically, Bye. Brian, statistically, Boban is amazing, right? Don't get me wrong. But the thing about it is he can only give you like 20, 15 minutes a night. They've been playing him more with Dallas, but the teams that they're facing aren't running up and down the court as they were used to. Yeah. So that's what they used to do to tire him out. Because he couldn't play more than 15 minutes because they're going so fast. He's so, so like, he, he yeah, he puts up, like, crazy stats. Don't get me wrong. Like, statistically, he is an, 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 an he's a force. Let if you could stretch, his, like, per 100 is crazy. Let me but, ask. Like I said, he ain't playing 100 possessions. Let me ask you. All right, I hate Let me ask you before we switch quick, and then we got to let James go if he has to go. Okay, we gotta gotta go. Like, yeah, I don't want to waste time on this. My bad, guys. No, 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 it's perfectly fine. Who of the two would you rather have in the playoffs right now? Who, who, one of the two. Is it Bobon or is it Enos Cancer at the center? Who would you, who would you have? Who would you have? Oh, I got Enos you. Enos Cancer. I mean, I mean it, it depends on who my other teammates are. Really, it does. Mm-hmm. And it also depends on who I'm playing against. I guess I would go with Enos because I respect his ability to defend in space. Because before he wasn't a good defender. No, no, no. no. He did grow. He did grow. Yes, you're right. Good job. I will say space. He's grown at that. One on one. Right. One on one defending and defensive rebounding. And he's allowed to be the guy still with Enos Cancer. Offensive rebounding. Very good at that. But defensive rebounding. Oh, yeah. He's, he's terrible. <laughs> the reason I choose Enos Cam is because, like I just said to Brian, I can't trust that Bobon giving me more than 20, 15 to 20 minutes. We got our version of Bobon on the Celtics. His name is Taco Fall. Like, right. <laughs> me and you agree. Me, me, no, all right, all right. And, and by the way, and, and me and you agree because, to me, he's more versatile, too, because, to me, uh, Bobon is only a center. Enos can be your, your center and your power forward. And, and in a huge lineup, maybe he could be a small forward in a huge lineup. So he's very versatile. I, I don't he, know. Uh, I don't know about Who's the best small for, 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 for the Raptors? Because the Raptors have a huge lineup. But, but, Brian, Brian, <laughs> Enos Cancer is not going to play small for over. Well, I'm just saying that. No, 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 second unit. Second unit. Second unit no, is what Brian, I was talking about. Not but Brian, not even the second, not even the third unit. The Siakam, Anobi, Chris Boucher, the Raptors, beside Jerry. What, what I love about that Nigerian black man all the way, that you ain't going to find any Nigerian non-black people. But uh, the thing that is so real about him is that simply this man just says, I'm just going to get athletes and I will have our guys develop them. And they have done this brilliantly. Siakam developed. Anobi, even though he would have been the higher draft pick if he didn't get hurt in Indiana, still mm-hmm. develop mm-hmm. and whatnot. Chris Boucher, this guy in Montreal did not even play high school basketball. And that's why my cousin that you heard. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's why my I didn't cousin, know that. Yeah, that's my cousin that you heard in the beginning. I like little buddy. Chris Boucher, Chris Boucher was played well at Oregon. Well, I mean, but remember, he only was able to play at Oregon because I don't know if you saw specifically his story, but he was just working as a chef and everything, and he was playing basketball one day, just pick up basketball, just like whatever, and, and the that's guy was like, yeah, that's, yeah that's it, how you it's, 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 incre- it's really incredible, because he was just doing, living hard up there in Montreal, the station all the way, and that's how it really was and everything, so, um, yeah, it, <clears> it, it's <throat> a story with that, but, um, you know, amazing that you guys get discussions like that already, this is why it's the best you know, basketball show overall. Overall, now let me ask y'all real quick. Of all the series that have been made in the first round that now we all know and we, we touched upon two of them, which one, uh, actually three of them, all right? So out of all of them or whatnot, like whether you had Jimmy Butler versus C.J. Warren and might as well be in a UFC cage instead of <laughs> on the court or, um, you He's know. not on his level. Yeah, or, you know, the intrigue of Luka Doncic, even though he has struggled against the Clippers this season, and the Clippers have made him take – he has missed more shots than he's definitely come close to making against the Clippers. They have 
made him turn over the ball. What series excites you most in the first round? And, and saying Blazers Lakers is obvious, but you know, what series excites you for you? Well, other than that, oh, sorry, James, he said you first, right? Oh no, no matter. I mean, it doesn't matter. You can go first. All right, I'm yes, just, I'm just gonna be quick because I yeah I'm I'm just, I'm just gonna be quick. Other than the Blazers and the Lakers, and by the way, I feel like the Lakers are are gonna struggle with the Blazers more than they struggle with Oklahoma because I know Oklahoma is gonna defeat Houston with or without Westbrook. I've been said it. I've been oh, said it. Chris Paul, Chris Paul is gonna oh, get his, and Chris Paul is gonna smile. Gonna and and that's why. That, and by the way, I transition. That's why I'm transitioning. To me, the Thunder and the Rocket one is the one to watch. It really is because you got James Harden and Chris Paul going against each other, and that big Australian dude, our New Zealand dude, who is gonna eat, 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 eat rebounds and make them make them sad that they ain't got no seven footers on their roster. Because Chris Paul knows how to use a big man. They are gonna crush the Rockets. And when Westbrook comes back thinking he's gonna save the day. He is just gonna fail and shoot bricks, and I'm gonna laugh and eat popcorn. I'm telling you, that's the first one to watch. Stephen Adams, who's one of the many cities, centers better than Bojan, Bo- Bo- um, um, Brian. I'm gonna say yes, um, Stephen Adams. Oh you know, shit! You know what? Hold on, take it. I forgot about him too. I'm sorry. I take it back. Take it. I even mentioned it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> But you, I agree with you, Brian. That that was a good the um that is the most intriguing matchup to me. Um, when ESPN just showed the playoff breakdown, I agree. To me, the both of the four or five. So Heat, Pacers, and Thunder, um, Thunder Rockets are the two. Especially because the Thunder were taking it to the Rockets before COVID. They. <laughs> They were taking it to yes, them did, every that. time. They, yes, they did. They so, did that indeed. They did that. And so, yes, they did. And Roberson is back. And Roberson is back. Remember what Roberson used to do to the Bears? That's a good, that is a good yeah. point. Andre Roberson is back. And, you know, Billy Donovan, you know, he's my coach of the year over Nick Nurse. And, well, I don't know, Mike Reynolds, or they kind of kind of forced that. But um, I just, I just, like, he just. You don't think Mike Boone. I think Mike Budenholzer gets a rough go of it because Giannis is so good. But I think he does a good job of under, getting his big men to understand spacing and he telling Brooks Lopez to go out to the three-point line and shooting threes. I think – and working the spacing and being able to get – Lopez is better than Bobon. What are they thinking? Oh. Hi. I'm sorry. Chris, I'm getting, sorry. Getting Chris Middleton to be effective, especially because Middleton has such a – Ball dominant game at times. Well, I think he gets a, I think he gets a rough head. It's, well, it's rough it, head. I, I can understand that for sure. What I will say is that I feel Nate McMillan deserves a little bit deserves a little bit more than Boonhoser, including having one sensor, another sensor better than Bovon and Miles Turner. But uh, I was I said Miles Turner. I said Miles Turner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I said Miles Turner. <clears throat> Well, I, I, when Brian said that, I was like, Brian, I love me some Boba, but I never, I ain't putting Boba on in no top, no top nothing. I love me some Boba, but man, no. Nah. I wish I could take it back. DeAndre Ayton. <laughs> DeAndre Ayton. <laughs> I'm going to say DeAndre Ayton. Yeah, Dang. Hell. Sacramento almost got two I, and a half. I even say, Willie Collins, <laughs> Stein, Lehman, uh, JaVale McGee, I would say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that, was uh, that was a little close. Hey, hey, right. yeah, listen up the Boba. You know what I'm recognizing now today? LeBron has to eliminate his closest friends in the playoffs this year. He has to eliminate the one by one. It's going to be something. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Yeah, yeah, good, 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 good. Yeah, good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Well, potentially. Hey. Potentially. Well, all right. I mean, I, 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 no, I, I really mean it. Like, I, I expect the Thunder to eliminate the Rockets. Like, I expect it because they have the size advantage. And they in the fourth quarter, they have that stat where they're so good in the fourth quarter. And I feel like Chris Paul is just – his mind is going to defeat the Rockets in the final minutes because his, 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 his basketball acumen is – even though he's not better than um, Westbrook and Harden, he especially has an advantage over Westbrook because Westbrook sometimes is lost in the fourth quarter. Over him and James Harden, he's just going to mastermind 
just getting them in foul trouble, whether it be or whether it be getting a good pick and roll, easy basketball, as big man and one foul trouble, you name it. Chris Paul is gonna mastermind this shit, and it's gonna be beautiful. Whoa, oh, whoa, that is a major prediction right there, yeah. all the way. Yeah. Uh, major prediction is you know Westbrook being out these first few games, and because the Rockets were playing tremendous defense, they were or, or very good defense, I will say. I won't say tremendous, but very good defense, and and really getting this encouragement. But the Thunder, I mean, Shea Alexander, outstanding. You know, as he continues to really develop and just be such a real force. <clears throat> um, they, they, I'm telling you, Darius, 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 Darius. I mean, I mean, not, well, the, the young star that did not go to Syracuse um, and went to New, ba- went to the D League, the D League, G League, same thing. And mm-hmm. um, Darius Bailey, uh, Darius Bailey, thing actually, I'm trying to remember it, pronounce it all the way. Like he, he, they have really developed him really that well, and he's surely, you know, done his thing. Where he's now become a person. And by the way, people forget that <clears throat> Darius is of the Beantown area. Well, well, he, well, he was born actually in Boston, but he did play. I, was about to say, I, I, I don't keep track of any of them. I don't keep track of any of them because what ends up happening is they go to a prep school and then. They put, the school, they put the school under wherever <laughs> the student came from. So then it's like, where they went to some prep school in Kansas. It's like, yeah, this person out of Kansas. And then you hear, like, somebody's like, oh, that's my cousin. And you're like, what the hell? That's usually how I keep telling people youth basketball in Boston is very slept upon. We have a lot of sleepers who come out of here. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of ties to Boston in the yeah. Boston area. Rocks, and people with our AAU scene, we have, I want to say, like a couple of top 25 AAU teams every year. Mm-hmm. You do. So really? we, it, it, ah. we need to stop. But like I said, what they do is they hide them away in prep schools. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, such and such out of Texas. And you're like, Oh, that's such and such's cousin. And you're like, what the hell? <laughs> Why yeah. didn't they say that from Boston? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting that you say that. And, and um, I'll just make a tangent real quick. Like Chino, this is why Chino Hills and the Paul family matter so much. My, my, my sister is here. Andrew, you remember? Okay, well, my sister's leaving. Sorry, I, I have to talk to her real quick. I ain't going to interrupt y'all, but I'm listening to y'all on my earpiece. <laughs> This is an incredible. This is a, I'm not doing a whole podcast. I, 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 let me mute you for a second, Brian, because I don't want to. Yeah. I'm gonna say, and I gotta go. Well, guys, let me let you go, man. Uh, Chino, we gonna talk the Chino Hills thing because they were the last public school. Okay, Brian, he, he's back. Go ahead, and say, make yeah. your point, Andrew. It was like Chino I'm gonna call her what later. Was they they were real in terms of being one of the last public true public schools that were like they weren't even they were just like we will beat you as a public school we don't need no prep school and for them to go undefeated like they did with the Ball family you know and a few other guys and to beat all these prep schools Oak Hill and everything like that that's something that's not talked about enough and I wasn't even really counting like <clears throat> the ball was in his senior year. And uh, in high school in 2016, mm-hmm. yeah, I think so. Yeah, so yeah, it's just something that it, it it's just important to see that whole that whole local true basketball instead of just going to these damn prep schools. But you know, sometimes that money is in there, and the money in the system. You see that to go down. Um, so yes. Yeah, so any uh, any thoughts or whatnot before we close this great edition? before these playoffs start, because um, that is something. Well, let me ask y'all, who, after now seeing in this bubble, or the limited action that um, James has saw, because it's just so ridiculous that they're even playing in the uh, NBA summer camp at Disney, um, who do you have now taking this crown after, and now you factor in Lou Williams being back, or Montrezl Harrell supposedly being back, who do you have winning this title in a COVID-19 bubble? Okay, let, let me just say this. You know how I feel about the East Coast basketball. They're weak as fuck. They're very weak. Mm. So the West. So before I touch the West Coast, which has a lot of possibilities, the East Coast to me is, is so simple and clean cut. 
The East Coast is simple as this. If if uh if Drew Bledsoe plays the shades, I think he's gonna play. They might lose to Miami because that 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 uh, is his name, Adam Bio. He really does match up really well. Whoa. And here's something I didn't know. Oh, you. All right. But here's something I didn't know, and this is me parroting of uh, my guy Nick Wright. I love Nick Wright. You, know that, you do have that Nick Wright resemblance, sure. I was gonna say definitely you met you definitely met obviously Eric Bledsoe. Because it'll be very interesting to see Drew Bledsoe leave his uh, Napa Wild Valley. I can't Drew Bledsoe. Napa Wild Valley. I'm sorry. It's okay because Jay uh, said some, I've, I've mistaken, mixed up people before. So, so yes. I don't okay. Know about so, I, so, no, no, and so, so here's the thing with, with Eric Bledsoe. To me, Eric Bledsoe is good if you're going against a team that has an amazing point guard that you need to stop. But when you're going against Miami, and ain't the point guard you need to stop. And to me, you just need a good shooter, like the guy who comes off the bench and who used to play for the Spurs, George something, something George. I forgot, uh, George, George Hill. Hill. Yeah, George Hill should be starting, and Blesso should be with the second unit. But with that, but with that put aside, I didn't know until Nick Wright said it, Miami is the best three-point shooting team in the league. I didn't know that. And, and, uh, and that um, when he was saying that the, um, that the Bucks are very bad against a three-point shot compared to all the other teams, and I was like, wow, that's a perfect storm because this young guy matches up physically very well with Giannis. And, uh, and, and Butler is such, like, he's so tough. He's so playoff tough. I can see him taking over a game and maybe ca- cause them to win some games that they shouldn't win. If they eliminate the Bucs, I feel like Miami could go all the way. I don't think it's very likely. So I think the Bucs will go all the way, but it's going to be boring. On the West Coast, it's going to be LeBron, man. It's going to be LeBron. Now, I mean, it's going to be tough, but I think it's going to be the Lakers. All right, I'm done. I took too long. Well, that was excellent. That's excellent. All I can say is that, dang, I'm satisfied with ending the episode now because Brian just really bought it overall. And it, yeah, Brian brought a lot of hot takes. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> Brian, Brian you want to come right back when we do the next one because I, I am intrigued now to see – how this is going to go down all the way. I, I felt at the beginning of the season that the Clippers were still going to somehow manage this all the way, despite me being a true LeBron partisan. If the Lakers had A.B. Bradley and Rajon Rondo, I would certainly make them a firm favorite because before COVID-19 hit, they truly were the best team in the league. LeBron really was emerging. Looked like he's about to pass Giannis in the MVP and the MVP award. So, um, but I, I just don't – but I will tell you this, though. The Denver Nuggets, God bless them. Nicole Jokic, second favorite player, deepest team now to me in the league overall and, and considering many great talents overall. I think even slightly deeper than the than the, um, than the, um, the Clippers. So that's what it is. So we're going to sweep that all the way. Oh, we got Sir Walker joining us at a, a, for the last 15, for the last 20 seconds or whatnot. <laughs> Sir Walker is going to join us or whatnot. Sir Walker, can you, got to, you got it. Sir Walker, can you un, can you can you unmute yourself before we do this? Sir Walker, I, I'm unmuted. Wait, hold up. Oh God damn, that is Spider Man Two right there. Very loud. One at a time, fool. And that is not a Donovan Mitchell reference. Quick, Sir Walker, before this basketball episode ends, a basketball podcast with no name. Episode two. Who's going to win? Who is going to win in the NBA summer camp NBA bubble? Um, NBA restart in COVID-19. Who's going to win the title in the playoffs? Oh, uh, I, I'm going to give it to the Lakers. I'm going to give it to the Lakers. You're going to give it to the Lakers. Whoa. <clears throat> he goes out on a limb. <laughs> That's my cousin. Woo. And, 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 I'm, and I'm putting one whole dollar on it. <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is it That's one, how confident I am. <laughs> one whole dollar in Jamaican money or is it one whole dollar in American money? Wow. One Jamaican dollar is like a fraction of a cent. <laughs> <laughs> I got more confidence than that. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Israel Jones with um, Jay Petty and Brian Cowan and Hakeem Walker with the best 22nd appearance to end the podcast. That's it now. See you on the next one. Peace. Wow.